I'm Michelle Boyd Waters with Rethink ELA and I am recording a totally unedited walkthrough or tour of the curated short stories library for you. And so we're just going to jump right in and get started. I'm in my Internet Explorer browser right now because I'm logged in um, as an administrator into my website in Chrome. So I'm just switching to another browser in order to log into my test account. So we're going to start out by clicking the um, bookmark that I already have and we have our site here and there's a lot of information here I'm not going to go through all of it but as you can see we do have a pop-up I've got this set so it doesn't jump out as soon as uh, you log into the site or as soon as you enter the site so you can just get rid of that and it's set to where it shouldn't come back for the next seven days or so and it also shouldn't come back once you get logged in so we're going to go to our member login and I already have my information saved and as you can see um, I need to work on my layout here <laughs> uh, and I have access to lots of different things but one of them is the curated short stories library and I do have access to the old membership page when it was all access short stories curated resources kind of a mouthful um, you can use that, but I prefer to use this now. So I click through here. Give it a moment to load. There we go. And now we're in kind of the course system, which I'm using to deliver the content to you. And I think it's a little bit more better organized and easier to access. As you can see, um, you can start the course if you want to take it that way. You don't have to some information about me, and then there's an area where you can collaborate with each other. You can make comments and everybody can see those comments. And by everybody, I mean people who are a part of this library. All right, so we have two chapters in our overview, um, planning your short story units and short story organizers. If you open that up, uh, I've got stages one through three of the short story framework, and I'm working on getting the last two and then we have some organizers. We have short stories by the month, by Lexile or grade level in case you need that uh, for that zone of proximal development. Um, and then also the short story lesson plan template. And I'd really like to hear what you think about that template because I'm kind of leaning towards not liking it. If you do like it, I will keep that one there. Um, if you're on board with me, let me know and I will get that changed sooner rather than later. And by changed, I mean add another template that you can use. So those of you who do like the one that I have here can keep that, absolutely. All right, so then if we click on to this module, then we open up, or actually it's a chapter, then we can open up the uh, short stories. And I try to have them all in here alphabetically so that they're easy to find. Uh, I also have a list of anthologies. I'm not including these because... Um, as the stories down here because let's open this up you have to actually buy these the authors um, this is a, these stories are not in the public domain yet the authors are still alive usually things don't go into public domain for I think it's like 75 years after the death of the author and then if they're the author's estate is still maintaining um, ownership of the stories and maybe that takes even longer. I, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on the internet so I don't know for sure but um, these you have to buy. There are some good stories in here and I make some recommendations but here are ones that I've seen recommended through NCTE, through the American Library Association and on some other lists. Uh, I actually got to meet this author through NCTE and Allen um, and got to kind of, well, there's a, there's a story on my website about it. Got to lead a discussion that she was involved in. And of course we have Jason Reynolds in this book. Uh, let's see, this was another one, another lady I got to meet. I'm trying to remember which one she is. Oh goodness, I can't remember. I'm sorry. She might even, not even be on the front there. But anyway, these are some stories that you can, uh, or books that you can purchase for your classroom library. And then of course over here we have a menu and you can just scroll down this menu.
and look at the stories that we have available in this section. So let's go to All Summer in a Day because that's it's actually September right now while I'm talking to you. And this is a good story for the beginning of the school year because it's still hot outside. So, you know, let's talk about summer. We have a video adaptation and I include the link here. So if you want to right click and copy that link and drop it into your Google slideshow that you put in your Google Classroom or maybe that you upload to your um, Canvas or how it, or maybe you just put it on your board and show it to your kids. An audio adaptation, if your students have access to YouTube, I would recommend giving this directly to them, particularly those students that you know struggle with focus or with decoding and just need some extra support so that they can get the story. And then there's some paired text, including a video, um, an article, a couple of articles, and then we have some essential questions. And of course, I back up that up with the research in my experience as well. And then if you want a unit that's already made for you, already done, then I have this one that's been very popular for years actually. I designed it so that it could be digital. Uh, so you can print the stories out if you want or, or the resources out if you want, but you don't have to. And then of course, down here at the bottom, we have the PDF version of the actual story, uh, two Word versions, and then one that you can download from Google Docs if you choose, whichever works for you. And of course, down here we have a collaboration area. So if you uh, have some suggestions on how you have used this in your classroom or questions on how you could use it, then you can do that right down here. Okay, so I'm gonna back out of this. And return. Oh, and I could, of course, use the breadcrumbs that were right there in front of me. Uh, so I could go to courses and memberships or just stay right here in the library. But let's go back here and take a look at one more. This is a story that a particular group of students of mine really enjoyed. So it's To Build a Fire by Jack London. And I have an animated cartoon, an audio adaptation, uh, a video adaptation. And then we have some paired text. This is an episode of Ice Road Trekkers where Lisa had to jump out of her truck because she was afraid it was going to fall through the ice. Uh, and then there's another episode of Ice Road Trekkers that my students really loved. And then I, of course, did the, you know, please do not try this at home warning. Uh, but this is a guy demonstrating what happens, not only what happens when you fall into the ice, but also how you can get out of the ice. And of course he had trained fire and EMS professionals right there with him. So that's something I would definitely say to students. And then also a, a film crew traveling to um, follow along with the Iditarod. And that was something that my students really enjoyed seeing, but kind of set the scene for them. And I have a couple of articles, more essential questions. And on this one, I have also included some novel or paired novel suggestions. And of course, if you have any others that I should add to that list, then I would be very grateful. Um, and so would the rest of our members. We have two printable PDFs and a Word file that is printable and editable. And then of course, if you have any suggestions or comments on how we can make this better, this unit better than, um, or the, this resource, I'm sorry, then that information can be added right down here. So that is how the Curated Short Stories Library works. And I can go right back to the main page by using the actual breadcrumbs here. Or if I wanna go back to my members area, I can just go right here and I can take a look at the original membership page, which I'm not gonna get rid of until I have everything moved over. But of course it looks like this still. And this chart is in the other section. Um, of course, the way I've got everything organized is already um, in the curated library, but you can still access everything from here as well. And like I said, I'll be getting this changed over. It's just taking a little longer because grad school. And then of course down here at the bottom, these are units that I created. So um, they're not part of the curated resources above. They do cost extra, but I spent a lot of time building these and. Um, we all, as teachers, deserve to be paid for the labor that we do. So, uh, like I said, if you have any questions about any of this, 
There is actually a little live chat down here. It's not always blue. If it's blue, that means I'm logged into the help desk. If it's gray, I'm not logged into the help desk, but I can be. So just go ahead and click here. You can do the live chat, or if you would prefer, you can go to the member help desk. So again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you, and I hope this video has helped you be able to make more efficient use of the Curated Short Stories Library. Thank you and have a great day.